So what we have is here's a development board for the MPC5676R um, device, or just sort of a generic board with a specific daughter board plugged in. And what I have is from before, one of the uh, micros off the ECU itself um, has now been put into that socket. So I have two micros I was testing with. So one's a um, like fresh one that I could program. Um, the other one's actually from the ECU. And what we have here is, um, this is an electromagnetic fault injection tool, chip shader. Um, so it's gonna inject or attempt to inject a fault um, over the device. There's a one millimeter tip. Um, we have a trigger line here. So this is a hardware trigger. Um, and I'm using this chip shader device. This right here, I'm just using it to trigger on um, serial traffic. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna send it a password that's, that's invalid. I'm gonna trigger on the reception of the password and we'll see how we can see um, when it's processing it. And then we're going to um, try to trigger this guy to cause the wrong code path uh, to be taken, which basically means it's going to accept this password that it otherwise shouldn't. So let's take a look at how this is um, potentially done. So what I have here is this, um, this is a Jupyter Notebook system. So um, this is what Chip Whisper is running in basically. And um, I had the, the Chip Whisper attached to the board. So um, I talked about before how there was this BAM boot assist module protocol as part of that. It sends a password back. Um, and what I was curious about is, you know, the correct password is feed face um, cafe beef, what you say here. And so I loaded the, the correct device in here and I could actually compare what happens when I said the correct and incorrect password. Um, and I used power analysis to do that. So that was actually a pretty um, sort of dumb, you know, power analysis thing I was doing with it. Um, because how I did that is I actually just got a little shunt. Um, so under here, I have a, a version of a uh, shunt with a small little resistor in there. So one ohm resistor. Um, and I actually put it, it's kind of hidden away under here, but there's a jumper right there um, that sets the V core power supply. And literally that's all I used. And the other end of that shunt uh, just went to a chip whisper um, input to, to give me the power measurement. So this is a really you know basic uh, method of doing this um, system here. So, and what we could see is that, um, you know, I haven't done any really, um, let me get the better ones up here. I haven't done any really uh, impressive filtering or anything that would help uh, make this more obvious, but here's a correct password. And you can sort of see one, two, three, four little humps. Um, and, and what the timing is, is I've, I've captured a bit of data before, basically right around 25,000 um, is when the last character of the password gets sent in. So there's eight characters in the password. Um, and this is another correct password. So I was checking that, you know, we had a reasonably consistent waveforms here. And what's interesting is this incorrect password one. Um, and if you kind of look a little carefully between the two, you can see pretty obviously that in the correct password case, um, the processing actually looks different. And so I didn't send anything else after this. What this suggests to me um, is that, you know, the comparison is done very, very shortly after receiving that that last character. So um, what I'm going to want to do is try fault injection. So the rest of this notebook has various things I was testing. Um, and what I've got down here, I'll, I'll use this last block here. Um, I basically have configured um, Chip Whisper to trigger. Where'd it go? Um, to trigger the chip shouter device. And this is pretty simple to do because um, I, I generate a certain number of cycles of this internal 40 megahertz clock it's using. Um, and I wrote that out to a, a MOSFET that basically is gonna give me an active low signal. This active low signal goes to the chip shouter. Um, and that's all we sort of need. And the one thing I'm gonna do is I'm sweeping around. So I've sort of found a pretty good spot here. Um, this is an offset from when that last character gets sent over the wire and when I insert the glitch. So normally I would just search a bigger range. What you'll see is it's not 100% successful. 
Um, so it's going to repeatedly try this, this glitch. Um, and how it knows it works is it just tries to continue the download. If the password was accepted, um, the rest of that download is going gonna, is gonna to work. And if it's not accepted, um, this download is going to fail. So if I run this, and before I do that, I also have to arm. Um, so we have the chip shader here. And let me just show you. Right, so we have a serial interface as well. Um, so I have to just go arm uh, the chip shader. So you, I'm just going to send the arm command. Uh, so this basically means it's charged and ready to go. Um, back in the Jupyter Notebook, we're just going to hit run on this cell. And uh, right away, actually, if you look down here, it says PW success. Um, and so it's actually downloading the code uh, to try and uh, to try and read out the rest of the stuff. So to read out the rest of the stuff, I had to make a little um, kind of second module here. And this actually all looks really good because now what we see is it's dumped part of the internal password um, that was used by this device. Um, what you'll also see, and I think it might have died already, but... Uh, once the glitch works, uh, there's a little LED here that will blink a few times because I've also programmed it to blink an LED. So um, let's run that again. So that was really fast. Normally, it's not so effective. That was like one of the first glitches. So actually, you can see here, it's it's automatically starts running back again. Um, so we can see in this loop, it's trying again. And it looks like it, it found another successful one. So... On the hardware side, uh, the reset stopped blinking, it stopped glitching because it's going to download. Uh, and we'll wait till that download finishes. And what you'll see is this LED here will also start blinking, indicating that it's running uh, my own code. So it's blinking, it's pretty fast. I don't know if this will record very well. Um, but indeed it is, it is blinking away. Um, and we also see that it's uh, recovered once again the um, the password out of this thing. So, so basically we have a, a super successful um, fault injection attack that with high reliability is able to recover um, one of the, the serial boot pass, passwords out of this guy. Um, which is kind of what you expect with fault injection. You know, fault injection gives you this capability to um, bypass a lot of code flows and stuff. Um, what you're probably interested in is, you know, is the same password. So I have another copy of the ECU um, here. And if we look at the password, um, the password itself actually looks like a English, random English characters, um, which suggests they are per unique per device. So I did confirm by trying to talk to this device with that same password that they do appear to be unique, um, unique per device. So the next step will be to figure out how to apply this um, over to this device in situ. So, um, you know, some of the things are going to vary a little bit in how vulnerable it is uh, because the board itself is a little different. The voltages are different and stuff like that. Um, but ultimately, it should, you know, eventually be able to be successful. Um, unfortunately, the device I have in the socket there does have a damaged uh, JTAG pen, if you remember from before. Um, so I can't use JTAG on this device with the same password. Um, and that password, as I mentioned, does have, you know, it looks kind of random here. Um, and so this is what suggests to me that they are using random passwords per device, which is really good from a security perspective. So you can't just break one device um, and recover out of everything. So this is just a kind of quick update um, to some of the fault injection work.